So now that we have a basic idea about container, Docker and Kubernetes, it's time to draw a clear line between them. Docker is the name of the company which created the container engine, right? This is what we understood just now. So generally container and Docker are used synonymous. That is, they say a container is running or they can say a Docker is running. Okay, both are used synonymously, but we need to understand the actual technical difference between them. Docker itself is not an object. The main object is the container. Okay, and because Docker was the first company to create the container engine, so still the term has been used uh, interchangeably. Okay, but it is very difficult to manage large container clusters via Docker, and that is how Kubernetes was born as a container manager. So you can have containers running, okay? And inside your containers, your applications are running in isolated environment, but you need something to manage these containers. So Kubernetes is that manager. It is a Greek word meaning pilot. And in telco terms, Kubernetes is also called as orchestrator for CNFs. CNF means containerized network functions or cloud native functions, which are container based workloads for telcos. So in summary, if I describe Kubernetes, it is an open source platform. It is used for deploying, scaling and operating application containers. It was started by Google in 2014 and later on donated to cloud native computing foundation, also called as CNCF. Kubernetes is also abbreviated as KATS. So whenever you see KATS written, it will be read as Kubernetes only. The meaning of the word means pilot or governor in Greek. That is why Kubernetes acts as a pilot for all the container workloads running into your infrastructure. So in actual world, this Kubernetes is just some black windows, some terminal windows, which you can see here. Okay, so if you can see, this is my Kubernetes cluster, wherein these are my three nodes, okay, which are working uh, as my infrastructure. And on these three nodes, I have some containers running. Okay, so this container is running on this node like that, okay, in the form of pods. And what are these pods and containers and nodes? We will check everything in detail. Consider this just as a first glance uh, to, to your Kubernetes. Okay, so there is uh, there is a CLI which is called as kubectl by which everything can be explored in Kubernetes. If I go on the node level on the uh, infrastructure, so here are my containers which are visible. So you see these are the containers which are working on this node and this is the image ID when they were created, what are their names, what are their pod ID, everything. Okay, so we will see everything in detail. Apart from this, you might have a GUI dashboard also for monitoring of your cluster, which includes your containers, your services and every all the Kubernetes objects that exists. Okay, but a GUI dashboard will be different for different Kubernetes solutions. Okay, but the CLI will remain almost the same. Let us see the evolution of Kubernetes. So in the tech world, 10 years back, 10 to 12 years back, what was happening is that around 2011, AWS was a market leader and still is in the cloud business. Elastic Compute and S3 services were leading the market and AWS sales were growing like anything. So what was happening is that all the development which uh, was focused by the developers onto cloud environments was happening on virtual machines based on EC2 instances in AWS. In 2013, that is after two years, Docker was founded and developers started container based development. That means now the developers were 
adapting their code to containers instead of virtual machines so they were basically writing container images so somehow aws has to have this facility of managing this container based development into their environment so in 2014 aws launched ecs which was elastic container services as a container manager on ec2 instances this was aws own solution into their environment to manage containers but somehow they had proprietary apis and a kind of lock in was felt by developers while managing containers via ecs at the same year in 2014 only google launched kubernetes which was originally the project named as borg and they launched it as an open source project which they uh, donated to cncf also so the question here remains that what led google to launch kubernetes as an open source project when aws ecs was already they already there in the market and why google launched this kubernetes as an open source project